So you want to create stats and loot tables for your characters. Both systems should work together, but you are not sure how to approach it. In this video, I'll show you exactly how, and I'll create an actor component that you can attach to any actor. With it, you can easily set up and manage all your stats. Each stat has a base value, and it can have modifiers that are additive, multiplicative, or even detrimental. From these, the final value is calculated. To identify what each stat represents, I use gameplay tags, which I'll explain later in this video. If you need to add or remove modifiers at any point, you just grab a reference to the actor, access this component, and call a function that handles it automatically. Every modifier also stores a reference to its source. The loot table is also handed through an actor component, where you can set the chance for each rarity, choose from which treasure class item should drop, and what percentage is the chance that item should not drop. Again, with a single function, you can not only retrieve the item, but also generate its stats. You can also adjust the loot table to your liking. For example, you can simplify it to only spawn handmade items instead of generating random ARPG style items. To give you a visual example, I set all my stats to 50. When I generate an item, it equips the stats automatically if it has any. Disclaimer, this video expects from its viewers that they understand the basics of Unreal Engine and Blueprints. This video is also a guide, not a tutorial, so you won't see me code everything. Rather, I will show you everything needed to replicate this while explaining to you what it does. So if you want to copy the code, feel free to pause the video and do so. Before we start writing the code, let's talk about tags. Gameplay tags are a user-defined string that acts as a conceptual hierarchical labels. You can apply them to objects in your project and use them to drive gameplay logic, similar to booleans or flags, but with far more flexibility. You can use tags to represent concepts such as attributes of an object, states or capabilities, game events or triggers. For Unreal Engine to recognize your tags, you must add them to the tag dictionary. Open the tag window, click the plus icon, set the source, and type the name of a tag you want. To create subtag, either type the parent tag followed by a dot, or click the arrow to add a subtag. To remove tag, click the manage gameplay tags, and then click the arrow next to the tag you want to delete. To make status component work, I first created few things. An enum containing all scale types for modifiers, a modifier structure, which I showed earlier, and a structure for the stats themselves. Inside the actor component, I made one editable array for stats and populated it with my stats, each assigned by a tag. Then I created the main function that adds or removes stat modifiers from a specific stat. Because all states is an array of structures, I couldn't directly get the proper index by tag. To solve this, I created a map with tags as a keys and integers as values, which I populate on begin play. This way, I don't have to loop through all the stats every time I add modifier. I also created a pure function to get the index based on the stat tag. Afterwards, the function checks whether I'm removing or adding the stat modifier. If adding, it sets the array element in all stats to update the stat at the given index. Then, I made another pure function to add modifier to a stat. This function retrieves the desired stat and assigns it to a local modifiers. Then it adds a new modifier to that array. With the base value and local modifiers, it updates the final value through another pure function. That pure function stores the base value as a local variable and loops through all modifiers, checking their scale type. Additive modifiers update the local final value and percentage modifiers are stored to another local variable. After looping through all modifiers, it checks whether the local percentage is negative or positive. If positive, it increases the local final value by that percentage through a simple pure function. And if negative, it decreases the percentage value by almost the same function. The calculated value is then output back to this function, which updates the stat modifiers and the final value. To remove a modifier, I copied the add modifier function and simply replaced the add with remove. Back in the main add remove modifier function, I also call the dispatcher so I can update widgets or anything else I need by binding events to it. Lastly, to make my life easier, I created a get stat by tag function to quickly retrieve a stat. If I only needed the final value, I also created get stat final value by tag. This setup is very straightforward and works perfectly. If you have buffs, debuffs, or other effects, you can simply add a modifier structure to them, configure it as needed, and call the component function. Loot tables are more complex, because I designed them to mimic an ARPG loot system. But again, you can easily simplify them to handmade items. 
Firstly, let me explain how ARPG loot system works. A loot table is basically a list of potential drops, each with its own rules, weights and conditions. Loot tables are hierarchical. At the top of the level, there is usually a master table for each monster, chest or event. That master table doesn't necessarily list every single item. Instead, it points to a subtable, for example weapons, armor, potions or even a specific weapon types like axe, dagger, bow and so on. This makes it easy to control large groups of drops without editing every monster individually. Each entry in a table has a weight or probability. When an enemy dies, the game rolls a virtual dice against the weights to pick which item or subtable to use. Tables can also be tiered by level, area or difficulty. For example, Bandit level 10 pulls from a level 10 loot table with a low tier weapons, while at level 50, the same Bandit pulls from a different table with a stronger gear. ARPGs adds an extra layers on top of that like rarity rolls or affix rolls. And the single monster death often triggers multiple tables or the same table multiple times to increase the chance of dropping items. Before creating the loot table component, I set up a several structures to form my loot tables or data tables in Unreal Engine. A structure with two identical maps for generic and unique items. A structure for affixes containing name of the affix, its modifiers, which item types it can apply to, a fix level, so low level items don't draw high level affixes, and lowest and highest modifier values. A structure for items containing variables such as name, icon, mesh, material, mesh socket, etc. For loot tables specifically though, we need only modifiers, levels, rarity and item type. Next I created a data table from the item structure. Here you can add all your items and their data. For convenience, the row name should always match the item name. For rarities and item types, I use tags. If you want handmade rare items, you can add modifiers directly to them, but leave generic items without modifiers so they can be added randomly later. I then created another data table from the treasure class structure. Here, the row name is the treasure class itself. For example, TC3 is for level 3 items. This is any table in the component, where you can assign which monster or chest has which treasure classes. You can add items from the items data table using the row name of specific item you want this treasure class to drop. Remember, unique items should have unique rarities such as rare, epic and legendary. The last two data tables are for prefixes and suffixes. A prefix is an affix that appears before the item name, and suffix appears after. In these tables you can add the name, the modifiers, which item types the affix can be applied to, the affix level and the highest and lowest modifier values. It's an array because one affix can have multiple modifiers. The index of the modifier corresponds to the index of its low and highest values. Here I am using gameplay tag container, which allows me to add multiple tags into one variable. I'm also using this to set a rarity for each affix because I might want to have an affixes just for better rarity items. With the tables complete, I created the loot table actor component and defined editable variables. A map for rarities, editable per mob or chest, an array for treasure classes, and a no drop chance, which sets the chance for nothing to drop. On begin play, I retrieve all suffixes and prefixes, loop through them and add them to a private maps for easy lookup. Then I build the main function that tries to generate an item. It first checks all treasure classes and decides whether something drops. If it chooses a treasure class, it then chooses the rarity, selects an item from the treasure class, gets an item data, and generates the item based on rarity and type. The check for treasure class function uses a pure function to calculate each treasure class drop rate so that everything sums to 100%. It stores the result in the local TC drop rate, adds the chance for no drop to local loot table and loops through all the treasure classes to build a map of all drop rates. The calculate sum function just calculates the total sum of all entries in the loot table. Another function uses that sum to randomly choose which loot table to use. If the name equals to no drop, nothing will drop. Back in the main function, I check if something dropped. If yes, I store the treasure class to a local variable. The choose rarity function retrieves the rarity table map and using the same weighted selection randomly chooses a rarity. It also checks if the item is unique because in ARPGs rare, epic and legendary items are often handmade. From there, in the main function, a pure function chooses an item from the chosen treasure class. 
again amounting to 100% and chosen with the same logic. Another peer function retrieves the base item data from the chosen item. And finally, it generates the item itself. The generative function is large, so let's start with the handmade unique items. It press checks the item rarity and switches on its name. If it's a legendary item, it gets all the same type and rarity items from the treasure class using a function that looks through all unique items. If at least one item was selected, it randomly chooses one from that selection. If not, it gets all items of the same rarity, a similar function but only checking rarity and not the item type. Then it randomly chooses one. If still nothing was chosen, it tries to choose epic items the same way. If again nothing was chosen, it tries the rare items. And if still nothing, it generates the highest rarity item it can with affixes, which in my case is magical. Generating an item is complex, but all paths share the one function. It switches on the rarity tag, and if it's common, it just outputs the item, assigning the rarity to it. If the item is uncommon, it generates random affixes using a function, which I set to roll one or two affixes, one prefix, and one suffix. This function first checks whether the item should have both affixes. If not, it chooses whether it should have a prefix or a suffix. Both are selected the same way. It loops through all available prefixes and checks these things. Can the affix be applied to this item type? Is the affix uncommon, since affixes can have rarity also? And is the item level greater or equal to the affix level, so a level 1 item doesn't roll a level 50 affix? If all conditions are true, it adds it to the local matching prefixes array. After looping, it randomly selects one prefix from the local array. With affixes selected, it builds the affix item. Firstly, it stores the base item name to a local string. Then, if prefix is valid, it loops through all selected prefixes and adds the prefix name to the local item name. It loops through all modifiers. Then, it randomly chooses affix values from the lowest and highest values. And lastly, it adds them to a local item modifiers. Suffixes are handled the same way. Except, it adds off to the name and then adds suffixes after. The B in both appends stands for the spacebar. Without it, you won't have spaces between affixes. Finally, it creates the item data with the new name, new modifiers, new rarity, and outputting the generated item. For magical items, I set it to have two or four affixes, so I need a function that generates random affixes for magical items. Affixes are chosen the same way as for uncommon items. The only difference is that I'm also checking if the affix is magical and not only uncommon. But then assigned randomly using for loop that chooses how many it should assign and then distributes them with a 50% chance to prefix or suffix. Here I set how many of each an item can have. Randomly selects one, remove it so it won't be selected again, increment the local number for that affix and add it to the local selected affix array. Even with this setup it won't loop infinitely if the sum of these two variables is higher than the number of selectable affixes. After this it builds the affix item. And you now have your loot table component finished. Now if you have a chest or something similar, just add the loot table component and set your rarities, loot tables and no drop chance. Of course, you also need to have all your data tables set for it to work. Now these actor components can be greatly improved and this video just serves a purpose to give you a base idea how this could be set up.
Hopefully this video was educational and you have learned something. I also have a Patreon where you can support me and get project files for all my guides. Well, that's about it. See ya!